Alright, how's everyone doing today? Derek here, and today I have another album review for you guys. Today, I'm going to be bringing you my review of Data Remember's Bad Vibration album. Now, I bought this the regular edition of this album because I actually wanted to get the Jewel Case version and not the Digipack. I don't really like the Digipack, the paper, you know, like the cardboard CD because they get ruined too easily. And they're just, I don't know, I just don't like them as much. I prefer Jewel Cases. So I bought the regular edition. I'm not even going to open it up. I'm just going to review it and just kind of look at it when I listen to the album. Because I have the album on Apple Music. I, I can listen to the Deluxe Edition, no problem. That's another reason why I didn't get the Deluxe Edition to begin with. But this album is from the pop-punk metalcore band A Day to Remember. This is, I believe, their fifth album or sixth album, somewhere in that vein. I think it's their, yeah, this, I believe it's their fifth album. Yeah, it's their fifth album. And the regular edition has 11 tracks, the deluxe has 13. And this album definitely brings them back to their roots a little bit. Like their early days. Like there's heavier stuff and there's soft stuff on here. But there's also tracks that combine both the metalcore and the pop punk style that they're known for. Because when bands do, you know, albums, albums like their early stuff. I have like two different genres that are totally different and mix them together. They'll often... Later on in their career, they'll often separate the songs into two different styles. They won't do the two styles in one track anymore. And I feel like a data member is starting to do that a little bit with their, you know, albums like What Separates Me From You and Common Courtesy, which I love both those albums to death, but they, they kind of separate the two styles. They don't have really any songs that combine the two, you know, genres into one complete song. But this album has a few tracks that do that, like... One track that definitely comes to mind is Paranoia. Paranoia is a great track. It's, it's like a fast punk rock track and has very little screaming vocals until the end. I actually did not listen to this track until uh, all the way to the end until like yesterday. And I love the ending to it. It has a chugging guitar at the very end and the screaming vocal at the very end. Are a great way to finish off the track. Like It definitely opens up good with Bad Vibrations, one of the heavier tracks with a kind of a really nice chorus to it then we got naivety naivety is like one of the really cool pop punk tracks on this record like there's no screaming vocals there's no you know really heavy metal breakdown it's a pop punk song about you know getting older and this track jeremy mckinnon the lead singer actually sounds like fat mike from no effects if anybody's ever heard of no effects the way he's you know the way he you know records his vocals on this he sounds like fat mike a lot it sound, he sounds kind of like Fat Mike from No Effects. Anybody, if you want to comment down below if you agree with me on that. I think he does. Like, the first time I heard him sing the first, the first verse, I was like, yeah, it sounds just like Fat Mike on this. And we got Exposed. This is one of like the, another one of the heavier In Your Face tracks with a really cool pop-punky chorus in it. Really good track. Bullfight, this was actually one of the lead singles that came off of this record. I remember when this came out, another kind of pop-punkier one. Kind of more uplifting track. We got Reassemble. This one is actually another heavier one, too. With more of the pop-punk elements. See, there's a trend going on with this album. A lot of them, uh, the, the two styles are combined once again. That's what I like about this record so much. Let's see. And the rest of the album, pretty much. It's pretty much from track 7 to 11. There really isn't a lot of a, like heavier stuff. There's a lot more of the pop-punk stuff that, that they used to do back in their earlier days. Like Homesick and... For those who have heart. And I do plan on getting those albums in a later date and reviewing them at some point. But I really want to get this review out because I love this record. Like, it, it surprised me. Like, I was getting into hip-hop and stuff. And I was like, well, let me see if there's anything new for the rock world that I've been missing out on. The two the two songs that I first heard were Paranoia from a Data Member and Green Day's Bang Bang. Which I'm most excited about that record as well. But this album, man. Like, we got this. You know, same about you. Turn off the radio. Forgive and forget. And then the two bonus tracks are also really good if you get the deluxe edition, which you have um, in Florida, which was track 13 and track 12. I don't remember the name of, but they're both more pop punkier tracks as well. So if you like the pop punkier side of Day to Remember, which I really do, I think this album is really good for you. Plus, there's also a few heavier stuff mixed in. See, Common Courtesy had 16 tracks. That album had a lot of tracks to it. And I think that was just the regular edition, too. I don't think there's a deluxe edition to that or anything. Apple Music doesn't say that the deluxe edition. It just has the common courtesy and a data remember. It has the 16 tracks. And there's a lot of content on that record. A lot of good stuff. Like, the album is definitely a great album. But this one, I think, is more focused. Every track they kind of put more, you know, precise energy into. And 
And I just love the cover of this album. Like, if you look at it, it just, you know, shows a guy in front of a subway. And I guess he wants to see a day to remember because back here it shows the day to remember tickets and that you can buy and that one's closed. But this one, this guy's open and he looks like he's a menacing asshole. But it's just really cool. Like, I love the whole vibe to this album. No pun intended because it is called Bad Vibrations. But I think my favorite track probably is Paranoia. Just because of the punk influence, the heaviness of it, the ending is great. Another great one I said, like, Naivety, a great pop punk track. Exposed, Justified, We Got This. I mean, forgive and forget if you just have, like, this still a regular edition of the album and you don't have, like, streaming or anything like that. You just listen to it on the CD and you bought the regular edition. It kind of sucks because, I mean, the, the song isn't bad. It's just, it's kind of too soft for my taste. Like, his vocal is a little bit too soft. Like, I love ballads and soft tracks, but for me, the ending isn't that great. But definitely at least an 8.5 to almost a high 9 for me. A soft 9. I'm trying to think what else. I'm trying to make this video a little bit longer. Because I mean, my reviews are always really short. And I don't want them to be that short. But I cannot wait to see what these guys do next in their career. Because I know they've had, this is I think like I said, like I said, their fifth album. Because they have, uh, for the name was Treason. They have, for those who have heart, Homesick. Um, what Separates Me From You. Common Courtesy. Oh, actually, this is their sixth album. My bad. This is their sixth. Bad Vibration. This is their sixth album. So, my bad is actually their sixth one. Which is crazy. Because when I first started listening to these guys like three or four years ago, they only had like three albums out. Homesick was like the newer album that they had out at the time. Or like almost... The, by now, it's going to be a decade almost since that album came out. 2009. So, about seven, yeah, seven years since that album's been out. And that's probably my favorite A Day to Remember record is Homesick because it was more produced. It was, you know, it felt... A more complete album than for those who have heart. Like there's more of a tighter sound. And it definitely did. <clears throat> have more of the pop punkier. And heavier tracks still mixed together. They didn't start to separate it too much. Up until after what separates me from you. But this isn't about homesick. I'm about to ramble too much. This is actually about bad vibrations. I'm still pissed off because I can't get this little thing off of here. I want to get it off. But I don't want to rip the plastic off. I want to keep this sealed. Because I just. I don't really buy CDs to listen to them anymore. I just buy them to put on, like, in my little basket or just to have them unopened. Because, like I said, I listen to it on my phone, which I'm actually recording this off of right now. So, I just do that. And I just buy CDs to look at them and kind of, you know, just to collect them. I'm actually buying all the Green Day albums from Kerplunk to the Trilogy and obviously Revolution Radio. And I'm going to try to review them every album up to that point. I'm not going to get 39 Smooth because that one's incredibly hard to find. A little trick here. A little trick I learned from uh, my friend Steve. He used to do this with CDs. You go like this and you can spin them. You do this with games too. A little fun little kind of... Instead of biting your nails, it's kind of a cool habit to get into. Just do this. It's healthier for you. One of the any of the tracks I really want to talk about on here. But I did remember always seem to start out with a really heavy song to start out their record. They never start out with anything like really soft, you know. They always start out with something heavy. Like, like they had Fast Forward to 2012... On for those who have heart, they had um, uh, what was it? I'm trying to remember, it wasn't it wasn't Wax Larry? It was the first. It was the other one. It was the other single. I'm trying to remember what it was called, but I know. See, I'm trying to remember what the tracks are called. I don't even remember at this point. I'm drawing a blank. I, I remember. I like. I remember the beginning. It's, a, it's such a really cool beginning to the album too. I draw a blank when it comes to this stuff. I hate it. I used to, like, know everything about, like, all the albums and stuff, but it's not anymore. But I feel like this album has kind of a sound. This album kind of sounds like What Separates Me From You mixed with, like, Homesick. And Homesick had, like, that purplish-bluish kind of, like, darker vibe, too. And this album kind of had that same kind of vibe to it with the album cover and just the sound and everything. Oh, The Downfall of Us All. That's the beginning track to, to Homesick. And then Sticks and Bricks was the beginning to What Separates Me From You. And then Karma Courtesy, I think, had Right Back At It Again. Or uh, City of Ocala, I think. One of those two tracks. So every track, it starts out with either like a heavier song or like a pop punk or kind of in-your-face song. There's no like softer beginning to their albums. That's what I like about these guys. Just man, this album kind of blew me away when I first heard it. I'm like, it's different, but it's not. It's still data to remember. 
If you want to listen to a David Member of the Record that's really different, you want to listen to what separates me from you. The album is different. There's only 10 tracks to the album, too. There's 10 tracks total. And every track is different. There's not too many pop punk stuff, but it's a lot of heavier. There's like three heavy tracks. But Lover's like mostly hard rock. It's mostly like a hard rock heavy metal album with some pop punk sprinkled in there for good measure. It's not like it's a. Not like it's a homesick or nothing. It's kind of like a. A more mature version of Homesick. But I like the. I really like the track on here. We got this. The very positive, uplifting song. About like if you're feeling lonely, then don't worry about it because everyone kind of feels the same way sometimes. Turn off the radio. This is actually a really cool track about not listening to radio propaganda and just like the bullshit that you hear on the radio, and like listen to good music, not that radio crap. And yeah, basically, I hope you guys enjoyed my review of A Day to Remember the Bad Vibrations. Definitely a great album. Definitely a solid eight point five to a very soft nine. I mean, it, it kind of goes up and down, depends on how many times you listen to it, if you get sick of it. But this is definitely a great album. I definitely want to pick up all their other albums, their whole back catalog. Between, you know, all the way from, probably from For Those Who Have Heart, all the way to this one. Because I probably won't get their first album, unless I can find it really cheap, brand new. But if I can't, then I'm going to stick to from their, you know, For Those Who Have Heart to comment, uh, bad, bad Vibrations. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys for more album reviews. Pretty soon it's going to be Green Day's, Kerplunk.